<laughs> Why do I have to look so weird when I do that? <laughs> well guys, today's a really big day. Today's the day that I just received my second cooled ZWO camera. So not only do I have one cooled camera, now that I have two. I thought this would be the perfect time to talk about my experiences with the ZWO ASI 183mm Pro, which was my first astronomy only camera that I've ever purchased. And I shot with this camera for about two and a half years and I'm making this video for people that are stepping up from a DSLR and thinking about this camera. And this really isn't a review, so to speak, but I'm just going to share my thought process and my experiences with the 183, so this might help you make a more informed decision. Now, I'm pretty sure a lot of you that are looking at this camera have already looked at the specs, so I'll just put them up here real quick but I'm not going to be really talking about it because I'm sure you're tired of people talking about the specs and just rounding that stuff off. So I'm just going to get into the nitty gritty. When I first started astrophotography, I started off with the DSLR, probably what you are shooting with right now. Now I decided that DSLR was not enough for me and I wanted more because I started seeing all these amazing photos that everyone else was taking. And people are taking these amazing photos with a cooled astro camera. Now, one of my decisions to jump into an astro camera was because a lot of my night was spent shooting calibration frames as well. Buying the 183 or any other cooled astro cam, uh, the advantage of having that is that you can shoot your calibration frames before your night starts and you can actually make a library so you can actually have more time imaging out under the skies. So your nights are spent more so imaging than calibrating. And that was one of the game changing factors of going with a cool astronomy camera was that. Now I chose a 183 specifically because after some research, I was looking at the field of view that I wanted. And at the time I had a DSLR and I also had a Zenith Star, Z, <laughs> Zenith Star Z61 APO refractor. And shortly after I also got in possession of a Z73 APO refra ref <laughs> refractor. <laughs> also by William Optics. Now I really wanted these views that a lot of other people were getting with their longer focal length refractors. And people just kept telling me, hey, you know, you should stick with wide field, deep sky imaging. And I just really wasn't interested in wide field astrophotography. I wanted to get into it, right? I wanted a more cropped in view. I wanted to look at what everyone else was looking at, but the thing is I had these tiny refractors. So in my normal wildlife photography and also in my nature photography, I would use smaller sensors with the same lenses that I had to get the field of view that I wanted, especially in wildlife photography. So my natural instinct as a wildlife photographer was, well, why don't I start out with an AstroCam that has a small enough sensor to give me the field of view that I wanted? And I looked at the field of views uh, in a app called Stellarium. I was able to punch in a few cameras and the sensor size and decide which would be the right camera for me. And it turned out that the ASI 183mm Pro covered pretty much all of my needs as far as field of view is. Now, there's a few downsides to the 183 and I don't really call them downsides because a lot of this doesn't even matter now. The 183 has really small pixels and it's got, I believe it's 2.3 micron pixels compared to some of the other cameras that have a four to 4.6 micron pixels. And the thing is, the bigger your pixels are, the more signal uh, you're going to be bringing in. And also, 
guiding is a lot easier within larger pixels. So the 183 had some challenges there. Also the well depth in the sensor wasn't as much as some of the higher end cameras. I have actually yet to run into a situation where the well depth was an issue for me. I've never overexposed an image. Uh, the only thing I have run into is maybe my stars got oversaturated at times, but it was very few and far between. And I blame that more on my early processing than anything else. Uh, the dynamic range on the camera was great too. Uh, I mean, I was able to capture like for like images with the 183 and I never really wanted me wanting more. And honestly, it's just been a great all around camera. Now, at the time, multi-star guiding came into play, so guiding really wasn't an issue for me. I was guiding with an OAG sometimes, so I was always getting super accurate guiding. It wasn't until recently now that I've been doing a lot, a, a lot of longer focal length ASR photography where my sampling is starting to get oversampled, which is why I ended up getting a second DSO camera. But if it wasn't for that, uh, the 183, in my opinion, has been super versatile. I say that because I can put my 183 on the back of, let's say, my, my wide field setup, super wide field setup. I use an 85 millimeter lens, f1.4, to my SCT, which has a native focal length of 1500 millimeters, and I still get decent sampling with all those focal lengths. So 85 millimeter, and then my Z73 at 445, and then I have an SCT, for goodness sake, at 1500 millimeters, and I'm still, I'm able to use this camera with all three of those focal lengths at no problem. So when I say versatile, I think the 183, because of its center size, and if you want a more cropped in field of view, is a very versatile camera to have. But the thing was, was the field of view was the most important part for me. And I decided to go with monochrome because I could get around a lot of the signal issues, I should say, that that camera might have had in color. But seeing a lot of the 183 MC, or the color version of this camera with, you know, dual narrowband filters and tri-narrowband filters, honestly, I, I don't even think it's an issue with those. But I ended up getting into narrowband photography, monochrome narrowband photography because of that. So my little 445 millimeter Z73 refractor was more like a 900 millimeter refractor with a full frame camera on it, right? I had those same views that I was seeing so many awesome YouTubers uh, capture targets in, but I was doing it as a, on a budget, right? Also my accessories were a lot cheaper. I had to add that into the equation as well. I was able to use one and a quarter inch filters instead of two inch filters. My filter wheel, I could use a one and a quarter inch filter wheel. I didn't have to get two inch filter wheel. So my accessories were inherently less expensive as well. So not only was I getting a good field of view and some decent sampling, even though because it's a wide field refractor that I was using, my hobby got more affordable by going with the 183, despite some of its air quote challenges. All right, so what did I not like about the 183? I know I've been kind of going off about what I've loved about it, right? Well, the one thing I didn't like was the fact that I needed to get a separate dew heater to keep dew off the sensor, right? And to me, the dew heater that goes around 
this sensor here, or this uh, can as I call it, or the bezel out here, um, really was an afterthought by ZWO. I mean, I'm glad that I have this option because it does help me out in the field, but this little cord, I had to make these spacers, uh, and these are 3D printed spacers that I printed out, um, because this wire is super fragile and it, I actually ripped one off the camera accidentally one day. So, although it works, uh, the dew heater part of this just isn't that great. Another thing was the amp glow too. The 183 has considerable amp glow, but it's not really a factor because it calibrates nicely out with the dark frames. But in today's choice of DSO cameras that we have now, there's a lot of options that don't have amp low, like the 533. So the 533, has a similar sensor size, uh, but the thing is, is it's got a square field of view to it. And if that's your cup of tea, I think the 533 would probably be a better option for you than the 183, just because of that. In my opinion, that's the only drawbacks I've actually really had with the 183. The 183 has been a super awesome camera to start with. It still is an awesome camera to keep shooting with. Uh, it's something that I spent money on and I'm still gonna use, and just because I got a new camera doesn't mean I will stop using it, which is great. Man, do you hear that? <laughs> it's the middle of summer. Sorry guys, uh, you can blame me <laughs> for all this rain. Because I decided to buy a new AstroCam. Damn. Uh, when I think about it, that's the only thing I hate about this camera. I, I actually love this camera. I love what it does. And I'm going to continue using it. And I hope that this video on it helps you out in some way in figuring out if this is the right camera for you. I, I don't think it's the right camera for everyone. But in my story, it was exactly the camera I needed and still need to this day. Well guys, I think this video is long enough and I hope that uh, this was helpful to you in some way. And uh, I guess I'll see you on the next one. Peace.